Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I wanted to review my complete black tie kit. Uh, yes, it's been a little bit of an evolution. Uh, my kit, uh, it all started back in 2010 with the commission of my first bespoke garment, uh, my wedding tuxedo, which I'm wearing right now. It's been, uh, let's say, let out a few times uh, since uh, that day in 2010, but it has continued to serve me extremely well. Uh, this was made by Chris Despis uh, here in Dallas, Texas, uh, and really is that iconic kind of quintessential dinner suit. Uh, it is a dark black, a moleskin, nice heavy fabric. I think it's a 13 or 14 ounce a wool fabric, a satin peak lapels, single button, a double vents, which could be considered controversial, uh, of course, I've got a beautiful uh, cummerbund, uh, and then the trousers, a uh, single pleats with a traditional uh, cording uh, on the side. Of course, the largest investment one will make in their black tie kit will be the tuxedo itself. Uh, but if you can't swing a bespoke tuxedo, uh, really the beauty of black tie is that the devil is in the details. And that is where one can have a lot of fun without having to break their bank. Uh, and so that is where someone that is looking to uh, just begin building a black tie kit really should focus. People often ask me, uh, that they're uh, going to their first black tie event uh, and what is it that they can do to ensure uh, that they look their best? Uh, my brother actually asked me this question. He said he's uh, going to a black tie event. He doesn't have a tuxedo. He's going to rent one. Uh, but what could he do to really uh, help ensure that he still looks great? Uh, and really, the easy answer to that uh, is just making sure that at a minimum, you have a self-tie bow tie. And uh, we have several uh, online here at KirbyAllison.com, satin silk, uh, barathea, and then a corded silk. Uh, absolutely beautiful options, each with subtle uh, visual texture, uh, one different from the other, uh, that give one an opportunity to really stand out. And there is no more telltale sign of someone uh, not uh, going the extra mile than a pre-tie bow tie, uh, and the perfect symmetry gives it away from a mile away. So uh, taking the extra effort to learn how to tie your own bow tie uh, really can go a long way. Uh, after that, the investment in a nice uh, dinner shirt uh, is the next best thing you can do. Again, it's one of the first things uh, that I bought was a self-tie bow tie in my own dinner shirt. Uh, we have uh, several online here at KirbyAllison.com uh, that we have developed in collaboration with Bud Shirt Makers uh, in the Piccadilly Arcade in London that are modeled after uh, two personal bespoke models uh, that I had them originally create for me. And then after the shirt, the, uh, the cufflinks, uh, the studs, Again, an opportunity for some embellishment. We've got several uh, very accessible models uh, online here at KirbyAllison.com. Uh, and then whenever it comes to the shoes, you don't need a pair of patent leather shoes uh, just for your black tie. Uh, one of the things that I wear uh, quite often actually uh, are these black hole cuts that have a nice high shine uh, here on the toe, a mirror shine. And again, a beautifully polished black cap toe or just black hole cut uh, really doubles perfectly uh, for black tie. Uh, as long as you have a good shine, you're still gonna show up better dressed than most others. So let's talk a little bit about my personal black tie kit. So you can see here that I'm wearing my first um, dinner suit right here, tuxedo, uh, as we call it in America. This is a, a simple black tuxedo, not an absolutely beautiful suit. Uh, but uh, recently I had the opportunity to have a few other jackets made uh, that I could accessorize with this suit. So same trousers, but different jacket. The first one, the first one was this beautiful smoking jacket. Again, this was made by Davidge Bespoke. It's a double breasted uh, jacket, right? And a beautiful green kind of bottle green velvet, green satin shawl lapel. It's got the cording, kind of all those details to really set this apart. Uh, this is exceptionally fun. I'm sitting here in the office and we're doing a black tie celebration uh, for the YouTube channel. Uh, this is something to wear again uh, to set it apart. Uh, a smoking jacket like this uh, could be worn uh, really formally. I mean, you could go to the same event that you would uh, go to uh, wearing a jacket like this with something like that. Uh, but most traditionally, something like this really would be reserved for the house. Now, that said, there's not very many people uh, left these days uh, that are walking around their house in a, a smoking jacket like this, but uh, it would be fun to do it uh, if you wanted to. Otherwise, this is a great uh, way to mix up or even increase the yield on something like this. And again, going back to increasing the yield, I mean, this is bespoke. Well, this is bespoke also by Davidge, uh, but at a different price point. So again, you can kind of mix and match within your wardrobe uh, to give it variety. Absolutely beautiful jacket, and it would be a shame not to try it on right here. Mm -hmm. 
there you have it, absolutely beautiful smoking jacket. But this isn't the only uh, jacket that can mix things up with a, a dinner suit or a tuxedo. I have another uh, beautiful jacket that I had made uh, to really commemorate my trip to Havana uh, for the first time for the 23rd annual Havanos Festival. Uh, this is a cream a shy lapel dinner jacket. Now this doesn't have a satin lapel, right? But it could have been made with one. Uh, and again, this would be what would one would traditionally consider kind of a tropical uh, dinner jacket. So you would never be caught dead wearing something like this in London. Uh, it would uh, be considerably bad taste. But uh, in the tropics, in the Caribbean, a nice cream dinner jacket like this in the Mediterranean uh, would be something that one uh, would absolutely wear. As I said, this was made by Davidge uh, Bespoke as well. And again, a beautiful a double-breasted uh, suit, the dinner jacket. All that's missing is the pocket square. And there you have it. I mean, another way to really mix things up with your suit. And again, same pair of trousers, same shoes, a different jacket, and it's a totally different outfit. So uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to know which of these three are your favorite. I mean, it's hard to choose. I love them all, uh, but it's fun to finally have some variety uh, in uh, my wardrobe now. Uh, and I'm actually having a whole nother dinner suit made uh, right now by Kent Haste Bespoke in London. I need to find myself on the invitations of more black tie dinner parties. So these were the jackets, but there's also some differences with the shirts. I thought I'd walk you through a few of my uh, bespoke dinner shirts that I've had made over the years. Uh, now, today I'm wearing a bespoke dinner shirt from Bud Shirt Makers in London. This is 100% spun silk. Uh, it's a cream color. Uh, and in my opinion, in many ways, this is uh, the pinnacle of elegance. Uh, that creaminess, that cream, very soft cream color of the dinner shirt uh, softens the contrast between uh, the black material of a traditional uh, tuxedo jacket uh, and the shirt itself. Uh, and the silk, because it's washed and it's spun, it's not your Regis Philbin uh, style, really shiny satin silk. Uh, it has an elegance to it. Most people probably wouldn't even know it was silk. They'd think it was cotton. Uh, now this is made, again, this was bespoke, but we have this ready to wear on KirbyAllison.com. Uh, and it has these, again, quarter inch uh, hand pleats here that give this bib a little bit of additional visual texture and a little bit of additional body. And so this is uh, something uh, that I must say that I was very excited uh, to add to my wardrobe. Now, coincidentally, well, let's just go to the beginning. Uh, this was one of the first dinner shirts that I had made. Uh, this was made by Davidge Bespoke or Hemmer Johnny Brothers. Uh, this is made out of a David John Anderson 330 by three, which is one of the longest and finest staple cotton uh, fabrics that they make uh, in the world. And uh, I just wanted to have something made with this fabric just to experience it because it is literally the finest cotton fabric uh, in the world for shirts. And so I said, you know what, let's do this as a dinner shirt. Um, and so we did it with a plain bib. Again, it's bib, so it's two different plies of fabric here to give a little bit of additional body uh, to the shirt itself. It's not starched, it's soft. Uh, and it's plain, which is, again, nice, clean, and simple. Of course, it's got um, French cuffs, traditional fold-down collar, which is uh, my preference these days. Uh, this has edge stitching, right? So it's stitched all the way on the edge. Again, stylistic preference, uh, and then cut for studs. So beautiful shirt, 100% white uh, cotton. And then after that, we have a bespoke Charvet dinner shirt again. Uh, this has those a quarter inch pleats. This has, again, a new collar that I had designed by Charvet. A great body, uh, they're beautiful fabric. French cuffs, of course, uh, as one would have made uh, with all their shirts. It'd be interesting to overlay these patterns on top of one another and take a look at the differences. Had that made about two years ago. And then my first bespoke butt dinner shirt uh, was this cream silk, but with half inch pleats. Again, you can see the difference in visual detail. You know, I like it. I mean, it certainly has a little bit more visual weight uh, than the quarter inch. Uh, and on this cream is beautiful, but uh, I felt that, you know, in having another shirt made uh, that I would go for the quarter inch uh, pleats. Uh, it's again, more work. Uh, it's more uh, kind of subtlety and finesse, uh, which is one of the things I like about this shirt. Again, bespoke collar uh, and all those details that one would expect from a bespoke shirt made by Bud Shirtmaker. And then just to round things out, the most recent addition uh, is really the same shirt, uh, but in the same 100% cotton poplin that we're having made 
uh, as part of a ready to wear program. So uh, I am long and deep uh, on my black tie. I've got those shoes. I have an old pair of John Lobb uh, opera pumps and then some beautiful uh, golden acorn uh, cufflinks and studs, which you can find online at kirbyallison.com. So there we have it. I mean, this kind of exploded on me uh, in recent years, uh, and I must say it is uh, fun. I always enjoy dressing up in black tie. Uh, and of course, around the holidays with New Year's and holiday parties at the Habanos Festival uh, in late uh, February. I'll be back in London in June uh, for uh, the Trinidad Festival thrown by Hunters and Frank Cal. All opportunities to dress up in black tie. Uh, and if it is a black tie event, uh, you can be certain that it is a special event. Uh, and it is my opinion that those special events really are the excuse one needs to go that extra effort to really dress up as much as possible. And so uh, when it comes to black tie, I pull out all the stops. Uh, I'm Kirby Allison, of course. Uh, if you're watching this channel for the first time, make sure you hit that red subscribe button uh, and go visit kirbyallison.com where we have the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories available in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories for the well-dressed, uh, like this beautiful sovereign grade a bow tie, pocket squares, cummerbunds, 100% uh, silk, uh, black socks that you need for tuxedos, uh, braces, and really so much more. And of course, it's the best way to support the content that we're filming here on this YouTube channel. Of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and as you all know, I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching today's video.